this is CS2510. Week 3, Lecture 1. So today we're going to talk about primarily plotting and also the idea of discrete versus continuous in the sense uh, the computer is a quantized and sampled finite state machine so there are some implications of that of the there are some implications of the fact that we're simulating an analog waveform on a digital system but in but first let's look at the learning objectives the first concepts are ideas of visualization plotting functions granularity and floating point arithmetic okay the language features Save this and continue. And thank God I have MATLAB already open. Number two, the language features we're going to look at our plot, fill, cat or concatenate, uh, the symbol infinity and NAN for not a number. There are no general notes. So let's get started with MATLAB, which is what this lecture is going to pretty much be about. So there are, there's not much writing, okay? So what I'm going to do though is online, I realize I'm going to post my, the sample code that I go over under the CS2510 folder on my website. So getting into MATLAB, the thing we're going to look at is, uh, let me get comfortable here. Desk at home. Okay, so we're going to solve basically three problems. Okay, the first problem. I'll, hopefully, we'll have time to solve three problems. The first problem is basically um, plotting polygons, okay, which is problem four to three from chapter four. So let me create a new script. And I'll, whoops, since I don't have the book, the electronic version of the book due to copyright purposes, okay? So let me just repeat, whoops, let me just repeat the question. And the question is basically the script plots an n gone whose vertices are specified by cosine, so x is cosine of 2 pi k divided by n, and the y is sine of 2 pi k divided by n, and k goes from 1 to n using MATLAB notation, we will plot the n-gon with yellow sides and a red fill, okay? So let me save this under week 3 examples and call this problem 423.m, okay? So basically, we're going to ask n as the n, we're going to ask the user to input number of vertices, okay? So we're going to assume, obviously, that n is greater than or equal to 1, it's an integer. We're just going to check if uh, n is less than or equal to 0, and we're not going to check if it's an integer. So error, n should be greater than or equal to 1, and must be an integer. You can add the integer check using appropriate MATLAB commands. Let's end, OK? So we will be using loops. The more elegant solution does not use loops, obviously. Okay. 
So let's create a new figure. Let's hold it, right? That is, whatever we um, display will be displayed in the same figure, right? So it'll be like there is the old figure will not be erased, as you will see. And the, then you'll understand why I'm doing this. Now, the idea is the algorithm, if you will, the design of the algorithm is basically, hold on, my tablet is slowing down, so I want to pause the lecture. I'm going to continue. Okay, continuing, I closed some unused programs. Well, I was going to say apps, but anyway. All right, so the algorithm, what we're going to employ is we are basically going to use the plot command, but use the fact that the plot command does linear interpolation. So we're going to basically make a matrix of uh, points and then just use the plot command. So to make the matrix of points is why we need the concatenate command. That is, I'm going to start with uh, empty matrices for plot function. OK, actually plot and fill function. So x is empty, so that's the empty matrix. So we're going to form a column vector of points. So let's do an end. OK, 4k is going one to n x sub k, just use the definition, is cosine of 2 times pi times k divided by n, okay? And y sub k is sine of 2 times pi times k divided by n. So now what the x coordinates are going to be cat, concatenate. So what does the concatenate command do? Well, there's the, uh, you can hit more help, but going to back to the command line, if I say, help, uh, let me turn on the more functionality. And if I say help cat, okay. So concatenates are A and B along the dimension M. So if it's, uh, so here it is. So I'm gonna use cat along the, uh, along the row, I'm gonna concatenate. So I get a column vector, okay. So I'm gonna say one, take my x and then concatenate all my points, then y is cat, I don't know why it's y comma y sub k, all right? Let's just check if this is working in the sense, let's go back to our command line, okay? And then just type p four two three, enter number vertices three, and if you look at this, so here's our x and y. So let's look at our x. You can see that's the x and that's the y. So it kind of makes sense, okay? Cosine and sine. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to plot the polygon. So plot, it says it should be plotted in yellow if you read the book. And then fill with red. But one of the things you got to be careful about, so let's just plot this. Let me close all the figures, clear all the data points, and then if I use the up arrow and run this again, if I say three, you can see, well, it's kind of hard to see in yellow, all right? So here is the first point, second point, third point. So these are the three vertices, but obviously the n gon formed by this is a triangle. So you need to actually complete this uh, polygon. But to do that, if you look at the fill command, So let me type um, help fill. You will see that the fill command actually uh, fills the, where is it? if necessary, here it is. The polygon is closed by connecting the last vertex to the first. So that's actually helpful for us. We'll utilize that in the sense. Uh, so let's go back here. Okay. So what we'll do is let me see. Yeah, so we'll basically fill the thread. Oh, this is what I want to type. Note that from the help for fill, the polygon is automatically closed. So all we need to do is since we are plotting on the same figure, but 
let's do a conditional that we'll only close it if n is greater than or equal to 3 and then release hold okay you say fill x y red so this should be pretty cool hopefully if i haven't made any errors so let's take a look let me go here quit this close all clear all right so let's try the triangle first so there it is okay that's kind of cool but now since i create a new figure every time let's just repeat this so if i just use two vertices and there i get so this is not well this is not error in the sense uh the x value is really small it's close to zero okay that, that's basically what this means okay so not not the x i'm sorry the y the y is close to zero and you can kind of figure out well why <laughs> y is close to zero for well, think about sine of pi right so that's also working but then let's check pentagon to do five so there's the pentagon okay and then you should know that for if you the higher the as the number of vertices goes towards infinity you'll get a circle and you should there it is okay all right so that's pretty neat so it's done let's move on in the sense, another problem I'm going to work on, and I'm not going to put this script online because it is so simple, right? So it is module 4.3.2, and this shows the concepts of inf and not a number. That is, MATLAB has a definition of infinity, but again, you got to be careful that it is the IEEE arithmetic representation of positive infinity, but I mean, here is 1 over 0. Okay, and the question actually asks you what happens if I do something like 1 over 0 minus 1 over 0. This is infinity minus infinity, and that's undefined. So that should be NaN. Okay, so there it is. And also something like 2 over 0 minus 1 over 0, that's also NaN. Okay, and then infinity divided by infinity is also undefined. Okay, and as an extra, 0 over 0 should return nan. Okay, so, there it is. so you can use infinity as an object. Well, not really in MATLAB. Right? In Mathematica, um, I think Mathematica, because of its because the symbolic computation engine, truly treats infinity like what it is. It's a mathematical object. Right? But let's move on uh, to the next question which I wanted to do which is module 4.3.4, okay? So in this case, what they're asking you is, let's say you define, this is the, um, oh boy, hopefully my battery is not dead. No, it's not. The battery in my Bluetooth keyboard, okay? So let's say you define in the X interval like that. What this question wants you to do is it wants you to plot 1 minus x to the sixth, but in two ways. One by just this definition, okay? and then the other by expanding using the binomial theorem. Right? That, I'm typing this from the copy of the book I have. plus 15x okay and I believe there's one more no, I mean 15x squared yeah minus 6x plus 1 okay so let me close all so if I plot x f red x g green what's going to happen is f is going to be more accurate Okay, in the sense, I'll just plot this. So you can see, maximizing this. So if you look at, oh, come on, there. So if you look at F, okay, it's smooth. That's because it is much easier. Uh, so what's happening with F is you're subtracting and then multiplying. That's, in this case, more accurate than doing this 
uh, exponentiation operation, operations, multiplication, addition, subtraction. Okay. Over this interval. Okay. So I can first of all let me show you some other uh, obvious nuances of the plot command. That is, uh, you can label plots, and you can also use the LaTeX interpreter to get like really nice access labels. So and plot title so text uh, let's see plot of dollar x versus f equals 1 minus x to the sixth okay and I'm just gonna write g in the interest of well I do have time so let me just um, type this out that is g is let's see x to the sixth minus 6x to the fifth plus 15x to the fourth minus 20x cubed plus 15x squared minus 6x plus 1 okay so this is what I mean interpreter oh, what the heck? oh never mind that's why it wasn't closing so let me just um, maximize this Interpreter LaTeX, and I recommend you learn LaTeX, right? Uh, let's see. Uh, invalid arguments. Oh, it's not text. I'm sorry. It's title. What am I typing? So there. So the plot. And you can see. I maximize this notice how it's given this nice uh, formatting for your mathematics it's because the LaTeX interpreter and then obviously you can increase the font size uh, font size is let's make it 16 okay and let's see how that is so there very uh, nice then you can also do an x label dollar x. So let me do it without the LaTeX interpreter to show you how it will look. Okay. Then y label f in red, g in green. Oops. So it looks okay. You know, to increase the font size, etc. But of course, this is over. I mean, this inaccuracy, inaccurate plot of G, just is because of the interval, right? So, what again? Whatever um, accuracy you're aiming for with floating point arithmetic depends on the problem that you're trying to solve. Okay? All right. So next time, that's about it for today's lecture. So for next lecture, we'll do, from chapter 6, we'll work on probability, randomness, and Monte Carlo simulation. That's very exciting. All right, see you then.